we're gonna get into the first project of the 64 Corvair. Now, I'm gonna be going on a work trip here soon, and the guy I bought this car from was prepping it for paint. So you can see there's a lot of bare metal on the car. Being that I'm going on a work trip, it's gonna be sitting in my car tent for a little while or in my garage or whatever, but I want to prevent any surface rust from happening. This isn't gonna be the primer coat. This is just gonna be a preventative measure for any more rust while I'm away at work. So we're going to rough sand the whole car. We're gonna tape off as much as I can. I have a Harbor Freight sandblasting gun Picked that up for like 20 bucks. And there, if you look online, there's great reviews on it. So we're gonna be using that sandblasting gun to get into the window sills today. Just, I want to do the window sills and just practice. But yeah, we're gonna tape it, blast it, scuff it all, and then hopefully tomorrow get it primered. And then that's gonna be it for a little while, at least until I get back from my work trip. So we're gonna scoot the car over, get it more centered in the garage because I do not wanna work out in the sun today. So let's get right into it. So I haven't figured out yet how exactly I'm going to do this because I want to blast and paint inside the windowsill edge. Now, how am I gonna do that without getting a bunch of sanding or uh, blast media inside the car? I just don't know yet, but I think I'm gonna try and put the plastic both in the front and the rear kind of make a valley that way they come out of the car uh i'm still working that out we'll see when i get there So it only took about two and a half hours to tape all this off, but we got the whole inside all taped off. I'm doing it this way, that way I can catch any of the media or the blast media, whatever, in there while I do the sills. Two and a half hours of taping. I'm getting so tired of taping. There's my old man over there. Now we're gonna sand the body. Hopefully it cools down and then we will do the sand blasting gun on the window too. I've gone over the entire car once sanding. A lot of it I hand sanded by mistake. I don't know why I was hand sanding. I finally, when I got to the hood back here, it was painted once and it had this like little gloss to it. So that was taking forever to hand sand. So I just grabbed my actual sander and started going at it. But I'm tired of sanding. I wanna play with the sandblasting gun. The Harbor Freight $20 
sandblasting gun. I'm gonna pull the car out, fire up the compressor, hook up the gun, and start blasting either the front or the rear window seal area. See how it works, see how much I get done. Hopefully I can get both of them done before the end of the evening, but I gotta make dinner tonight. So I'm gonna play with it for a little. Maybe I finish both windows, maybe I don't. Tomorrow I'll start back at it again, finish both of the windows, sand the car once more, just go over once more, and then prep it for paint. Go over it with a tack rag, and I don't know if I'm gonna paint it in the garage, outside, or in my car tent yet. Car tent seems like the best viable option, but we'll see when we get there. Let's start plan with that sandblasting gun. Yeah, um, that goes everywhere. Okay, so press is going. I gotta let it refill. But I literally just went less than a minute and I'm already All right, that was a complete mess. Just ridiculous amount. I mean, it got everywhere, every crevice, every crack of not only the car, but me as well. The blast gun definitely did a pretty good job. You could really tell under there where it just completely stripped it. But it doesn't, unless you're really holding it on there for a while, it's not gonna strip all the way down. It's definitely not gonna do heavy metal spots like this but i don't even think i'm gonna worry too much about this i may or may not hit it with a wire wheel but as thick as that is i'm actually worried about going through the metal too much so at this point i'm gonna clean up the media i'm probably gonna go to town pick up like a rust encapsulator or sealer or something and i'm just gonna clean it up and prep it for the paint probably go over once more in the morning i'll sand it once more in the morning and then i'll start prepping for paint so that's where we're at now Okay, so we're on to a new day, and today we are going to be wire wheeling the window sill out. Now, yesterday I sandblasted it. I sanded the whole car and then sandblasted the sill. Well, I noticed as I was blasting out the primer that a lot of the rust, the surface rust and rust that I was seeing in the sill was actually just on the primer coat. As soon as I would blast through that, we would get down to original paint on the car. Now, there's still some spots that there's some pitting that I'm concerned with and what I'm gonna be doing is using a rust fix now we're just doing preventative measures at the current moment this is not gonna be final coat of primer on the car but I am going to be using this rust fix to spray into the windowsill we're gonna put two or three coats on and then we're going to rough sand the whole car again and then prime it all just to prevent any surface rust while I'm away on my work trip that's where we're at today let's get to it So this rust fix supposedly stops rust on contact. Sandable and paintable for smoother finish, applies clear, turns rusted surface black. And it's also supposed to be, uh, can be used with body filler and fiberglass. So we're gonna let this dry for a little while. <laughs> And then we'll see what happens with any of the little rust spots. It's supposed to turn it black. We'll probably put another coat on and then we will start sanding. 
been about two and a half, three hours. I have been running my garage heater and some fans to circulate the heat. It got really toasty in here. And I did that because the directions on the Duplicolor Rustfix actually say to let it fully cure for 24 hours. It doesn't say like paintable within two or three hours. It says wait 24 hours. Well, that's not gonna work for me. I'm trying to prime this today. So we're gonna do a little experiment, see how it turns out anyways. It is mostly dry. There is a little bit here kind of down in the crevice that feel a little tacky, but the rest of this is all nice, good to go. You can see here where there wasn't any rust, it kind of just darkened it, put a little coat over it, but where there was rust, it has fully turned it black, and that's what it's supposed to do. So now we're going to start sanding. Again, we're gonna go from bottom to top, and then I have an alignment for the Subaru at one o'clock. So I'm gonna try to sand it and wipe it all off and clean it and get it ready to prime. That way when I come back from my alignment, I could just spray it and that will be it. We're gonna jump into sanding again and then I'll get back with you when we get to the priming stage. Man, I can't seem to catch a break with the Subi. So I put the coilovers on it and I got some camera going on, obviously. Well, I make a, a, a schedule and alignment with Les Schwab. Les Schwab says no problem. And then I get in there, I drop it off, and they call me back like an hour later. Yeah, we can't do your alignment. The car's too low. Can't get it on the rack, it's too low. I've had problems with Les Schwab before. Well, for one, they did the alignment on the suit first time, and my steering wheel was crooked, but I had it done so close to me going to work that I just went with it. Well, so they refused me. They said the car's too low. I said they'll rip my bumper off. I said, I'll take my bumper off. They say, no, we'll tear up the undercarriage of your car. Okay, well, I'll find another shop. I call another shop. I tell them I have a low car. Les Schwab won't do it. And they say, well, if Les Schwab won't do it, then we won't do it. Okay. They say, maybe go to this place. So I go to the next place. They say, oh yeah, we have no problem. We'll get it on the rack. We'll use blocks or whatever we have to. Cool, so now I bring it to this place. And uh, I dropped it off an hour early, not at one o'clock. I dropped it off an hour early because my ride was already going to town. So I figure I'll drop it off, I'll come back and I'll work on the Corvair. Well, they called me 15 minutes ago, 30 minutes into my scheduled alignment time. And now they tell me they can't do my alignment because my lower ball joints are blown. Understandable. I mean, you guys do the alignment, my ball joints blown, I hit something, it goes all out of whack again. Understandable. Man, this is the third shop now that won't do my alignment. So, but they said replace the ball joints and we'll do the alignment. So now I gotta replace the ball joints. I'm not too worried about the alignment anymore. I'm just forget about it. I got other things to worry about. So after a few hours of sanding and cleaning, going over, wiping it all down, making sure it's clean, we're ready to paint. Now, I've only painted a car one other time and I'm definitely not a professional. The other time I had painted, I'd used my dad's gun. It is like a professional paint gun. Today, I'm using a Harbor Freight paint gun. So we're gonna see how it turns out. I had planned on pulling it out of the garage and outside because I'm not too worried about getting stuff in it or whatever. It's gonna get sanded down again anyways, but it's a little breezy out there. So we're gonna try and spray it in the garage. So I already did a little test run on my burn barrel over there and I think we're ready to go. It's the first time I've ever mixed paint myself, got it all ready. I cleaned the gun, did everything what the direction said. So let's hope it turns out good. It's coming along better than I could have hoped. I started on the roof up here. I gotta get a ladder or something, but I was going for a one coat, even working my way down to the fender, just a one coat application. And then as I work my way back, I started going to a lighter coat, but I think I'm going to continue with the one coat because it's looking good and I'm not getting any kind of runs. So I'm just gonna continue what I'm doing. But I started going to the lighter coat because I seen how much paint I was going through. So I just wanted to get some coverage over there, but I got a feel for it. So we're gonna mix up some more paint and then we're gonna finish the coat. Well, here she is in all her glory, boys. Now, 
I kind of screwed up when I started because I didn't adjust the spray pattern. So I did half the car with a very narrow spray. I tried to adjust it when I first started, but it like battered out in clumps. So I just went to what was the smoothest and then I ended up adjusting it and it came out better later, but. Here she is. Now that she's all one color, you can really see where the body work I'll have to do is. I got a little bit back here and I do believe some up forward. But the paint job came out real good. There's a little up here. I think over here. But besides that, the paint job came out really well. I know I only have one spot with some drip. Let me shut them off. I got one spot with some drips and I know I got drips. Actually, I didn't even look at it. Right here. Right there. And it was just because I was trying to spray up around and I just got too much in there. But besides that, no other drips on the car. So that Harbor Freight paint gun came out. It did its job for, I don't even know what I paid for it. Like 30 bucks maybe. Um, it worked really well. I did get the windows back in. I just have them duct taped right now because I don't have the seals for it. And like I said, I'm doing this, that way I could let it sit going into winter. It's prob probably, I'm gonna put it in the car tent. So it's gonna be sitting in the car tent, probably at least while I'm gone for work. When winter actually comes, December, January, maybe I'll bring it into the garage, but it just needed to be cleaned up and ready for my work trip. We're gonna park her and we're gonna start on some other projects again. I gotta do the ball joints and the subi, and then I'm probably just gonna relax until my work trip comes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm real happy with the paint job. If you guys are interested in further following along with the 64 Corvair project, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.